Hey guys, it's Prep Zone Game Time presented by Bevel State Community College. James Phillips is back this week, thank goodness. Jonathan, uh, sorry I left you in the lurk last week, but I was in the hospital. Has it only been one? It seems like it's been a month. I know, it <laughs> seems like it's been a long time. It's good to have you back though. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely. Good, good to be back. Um, game of the week this week, Curry traveling to Gordo. Yeah, uh, that, my, that's kind of a surprise pick. Surprise I pick. Mean, if you but, don't know what we're doing with it, it is a kind of surprise pick. Right, but I think people will see as we move forward here in, on game time, they'll see exactly why we why we pick Curry. Um, should be, an, uh, you know, I mean, it's going to be a blowout, but mm -hmm. we really uh, we really needed to focus on Curry for a little bit. It's the only team we haven't been to this year. Right. We haven't done any interviews, talked about them much. So it's it kind of their week. Right. No right. matter the opponent. Right. Um, we were able to talk to Coach Emerson. Uh, you did. You went up and talked to Coach Emerson, got some information from him, and uh, and kind of got his read on how the season's been. And what what'd you think? Great guy. They got a. I think they're fortunate to have him over there. But he's laying a foundation. I I really think we're even before the foundation. Right. Let's just say they cleared the land. Right. So that, this year they're clearing the land, and they're going to start doing the foundation and go from there. But he's the right guy. It's just going to take a while. You know. And he's definitely impressed us, and I think uh, after people will listen to what he's got to say, he'll impress them as well. Just take me through the year so far, eight games in. Eight games in, 0-8, oh um, have had our struggles, our up and downs. So, uh, we had to forfeit one uh, due to COVID and having to quarantine some guys. We had a positive test on the team, and due to the people he was around on the bus with, he has a brother on the team, so we had to quarantine about seven or eight guys. So we just we put us down to about 12 to 13 to play that week, and we just couldn't go play like that. But numbers have been down. It's you know it's it's been a struggle a little bit at times. Um, the positivity that I wanted to bring to the program, it, it's still here. It's still with the you know the stakeholders. Um, we're focused. You know, I tell them every week, and it's been it's not just now that you know we're getting in some tougher competition or like that. It's been since this day one. Don't solely focus on the scoreboard results. You know, we want to focus on ourselves. We want to get a little better one day at a time. And, you know, slowly but surely some things are starting to change. I think, I think the culture is a little better here. You know, obviously I'm judged on the wins on the scoreboard, but I don't want those kids judged on that. I, you know, I want them doing the right things day in and day out and trying to get a little better. All right, well, give me some positives. What about these kids that have stuck it out? You know, we, you know, we're discussing before we went on air about the seniors sticking it out and how they've struggled their whole career here. You know, as freshmen, I don't know if they've won a game. Um, you know, just their leadership and their buy-in. The, the guys that I got in that locker room, they're, I, I believe 99% of them are 100% bought in. You know, whatever I ask them to do, you know, whether it's picking up trash or making sure the locker room's clean or the weight room's put back the way we want it. They're bought in, and, and you know that positivity has been great. The leadership uh, of the seniors sticking it out. You know, there's a, a million reasons on why they probably shouldn't have stuck it out, and then and there's a select few on why they should, and they're hanging on to those why they should. And you know, I couldn't appreciate them and be more thankful for what they've done, and will continue to do these next two weeks. Take us through. How, how old is it? Is this an older team or younger team or what? It's kind of a little of a mix. Uh, not a big. You know, I got six seniors. I got a real big junior class. Um, I, you know, I, I won't say a big class junior class. About ten kids. You know, a, a big class. And in, 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 you know, I was a four. I went to a four A high school, and we had twenty seniors in my. Senior, you know, that was a big senior class. Um, but big for us. You know, those ten around ten or so. It may be. You know, give or take a few more than that. Junior class is pretty big. Sophomores has good numbers. We're really down on freshmen and eighth graders. Um, so that's going to kind of be my goal is, you know, obviously we want more no matter what grade you're in to come out. And i got to come with the biggest recruiter, recruiter in our halls. There is even more than what I've tried to do already. But, you know, it's getting those numbers up. You know, so our numbers being as low as it is is kind of restricted how we've had to practice. And I really don't want those restrictions placed on our practice as far as, you know, the numbers causing those restrictions. Have you noticed that? Is the attitude still good with the kids? Attitude's been great. You know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I tell them every day. There's two things they can always control, and that's attitude and effort. And the, and me as a coach and as a staff, those are non-negotiable. You know, bad attitude, bad effort. 
that is not tolerated ever, you know. And so those are two things to control, and, that, and that's what we harp on every day. Every other mistake, coaching mistake as far as technique or the play not working or this or that, that's my fault or any of the other coaches. It all falls on me. I, we tell them that's our fault, you know. We control a little bit of that. And if they don't execute on a play, you know, that's our fault. But their attitude and effort, they control, and, you know, that, those are non-negotiables. And those have been great for right, the most so, part. So uh, we talked about kind of before the season, it's a foundation year. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you really – you mentioned numbers. Is that the big thing that needs to be focused on in the next, coming up years? Um, numbers and, and in the weight room. We, we, we you know, I kind of want to – when I got here, we were in an off. We implemented implemented the off season workout. We were going four days a week, and you know, really four days in the summer, all throughout the summer. And then when we got here, I, I tried to transition to the in season workout. We were only lifting two days a week, and about one or two games in the season, I could really tell that we were behind in the weight room. Everybody else was more physically stronger than us, you know. Um, so I I asked that, and I, we're back in here four days a week, and we just we really got to get in here more in the weight room more than what we have been you know um, strength and then some speed and agility work you know some hip flexibility hip mobility all that's great but we're really behind in weight room and then always numbers is great you know what was your hopes these last two weeks uh, just continue to, to get a little bit better you know to continue to get the culture better uh, continue doing the right things I, I want to try to end on as positive as we can for these seniors um, we did some things during our bye week. We went bowling. You know, I want to do some more team activities with them. You know, with them a part of the team even after the you know the season's over. So a few activities just and just really show them how much I appreciate them and stuff like that. All right. Hey, well, Curry does have the best logo in the county. <laughs> we love that logo. <laughs> love to see logo's great. Um, you know, love the colors. Love the school pride. Um, you know, just I hope you know. We're, I'm all about having fun, enjoying, and getting better, and hopefully that positivity and all that carry over in the school building. The, the kids start spreading that, hey, man, you know, coaches, coaches are not really going to, you know, wear us out if we don't play as best as we can. You know, we fix our mistakes, and we're going to get through practice and, you know, not get through it, but, you know, enjoy the time that we're out there, and hopefully that will spread to the other kids. Hey, well, maybe I need to give football a chance. It's not all what I think it is. Yeah. So. Well, hey, well, thanks for joining us, Coach. Appreciate I appreciate you guys. Luck. I appreciate you guys and what y'all are doing for high school athletics. It, it means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, we're back. I uh, heard from Coach Emerson there. Uh, I think he's got a lot of energy. I think he's the right guy to, to turn this program around. Yeah, I mean, we met him really the first time at Media Days this year. He was so good. I just remember him over there writing notes before he even got up there. Right. And then he got up there and he was out of the, you know, he was perfect. Right, and he was somebody that really enjoyed media day. Like, yes. And I think most of our coaches do now, that they know what it is, and, and they enjoy this stuff where we yep. are able to come out and highlight each program. I think each all of our coaches have, have figured out, oh, this is what they're doing, and, and they love being able to put their, their team out there for people. That's the thing. Yeah, he does that. And we talk, I mean, we talk to those kids, too, and, you know, they, they follow his lead. Right. You can already tell. It's been one year. Right. So let's see how this goes in a couple of years. I, th I think – They'll give him time at Curry. Right. Well, and speaking of highlighting uh, players and student athletes in the area, our Player of the Week each week is always a, a fun topic. And this week it was Trayvon Stewart from Jasper. Man, he has broken out the last couple of weeks and had some really good games. And this week was was unbelievable. The game, you know, the game he had last Friday night. Yeah, two hundred eighty yards, three touchdowns, thirty two carries. If you look at him, you'd be like, this guy carried it thirty two times. But, uh, I mean, he likes being – beating the odds. You know, right. people said that he could never be like a Derrick Henry. But, I mean, there he was running all over the field last week. Right. Yeah. That's two weeks in a row. Well, he's one of those guys, he's a quiet guy. Uh, and early in the season when we featured Jasper, just did not want to speak on camera hardly. So, I'm, I'm really proud at the how he's improved in that area so wow. far this season. You would never know that. He yeah. is really comfortable with this now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's hear from a talkative Trayvon Stewart now. We're joined by Trayvon Stewart, our player of the week this week. Another good game for you, man. Yes, sir. It was the biggest game of my life I'll probably ever have. So I was, I was ecstatic. You know, we talked last week on the uh, being your last game here and I asked you if you could duplicate that. I think you had 
right around 30 touches last week, and you had 32 again this week. Yes, sir. So you didn't just – you eclipsed that, didn't you, this yes, last week? Uh, I almost eclipsed it. I, uh, I, have, I did eclipse it. Uh, got a more, 100 more rushing yards than I <laughs> did the previous week. So uh, these past couple of weeks has been – I've been working, been grinding with my uh, – Amazing offensive line. Uh, the staff just trusted me. Just let me go out there and make plays. So that was your best career. I mean, two eighty, three touchdowns. I mean, it's hard to believe. Yeah, I, it's especially get that high. Nobody told me I was I didn't get that high. Especially being it would have been senior night in the atmosphere and it being my last home game over there. It was just it was a big night. I was just ecstatic. I was having fun. I was. It was it was amazing. Couldn't ask for anything more. That last game. You can't. Uh, what do you think is your best attribute as a running back? Um, definitely my vision and being able to stay keep balance on my feet and making cuts in the holes. Uh, here we run a lot of even though we run inside a lot of tackles, so you have to have that vision and have balance on your feet to stay up. Cause it's hard going against like I'm not the biggest person, but you no. Know, Nobody really has confidence in me if I like run to the tackle and like somebody's like six two, like two fifty. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a big like I'm a disadvantage. <laughs> but if I'm able to make a move and hit the hit the holes fast, like Coach Matthews always says, just hit the hole fast, know where I'm going, make the right read and go. I'll take it from there and just my speed. Hopefully, get me home. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pictures where you were in front of the guys. Um, how much you, have you enjoyed the offense this year? I have enjoyed it so much, entirely so much. Uh, it's way better than it was last year, more communicating. Um, everybody's talking to each other. Uh, we're making, helping out the, some of the lower classmen like Titus, you know, help them get prepared. And Corey's helping out, Garrett, some of the other class, Drake Britt, y'all seen him out there where Jasper couldn't play. So this. It's been a lot of communicating, especially there's a lot of seniors on the team with me, Dalton, Preston Reed, Kevon Samuels, Dalton, Caden Mormon, and Jackson Blackwell and Luke Skelton. So it's, it's a lot of seniors and a lot of lead, lead, leadership on this team, sir. I know the offense, last four games, 40 and a half points per game. When did, uh, what changed as opposed to early in the season when you're all playing Coleman, teams like that? I think the attitude just changed because the attitude just changed for us. It was like, in order for us to stay competitive against these, these, this region we're in with Clay and Pinson and Gardner and all of them and Jo, we we got to score points. We know like, we know everything matters. But as long as like the big, like Hills Bay said, the big numbers on that scoreboard are the only ones that really matter. <laughs> so if we can just, you know, keep point, keep piling points, and defense get stops, they can't really, they can't really compete. Uh, what's the hopes for you the last two games of the year? Uh, to hopefully go out here and have the same impact I've been having the past two weeks. Um, especially this being my last, being probably be my last two games playing high school ball. Um, I'm hoping to go out here and continue the run I've been on and hope keep winning, keep having fun, keep playing with the guys, and God will take me more the rest of the way. See what he has in store for me after that. All right, man. Well, good luck the last two weeks. Thanks Thank for joining you, us. Hey, no problem. Your story starts at Bevel State Community College. Whether you are just starting out or starting over, Bevel State has an opportunity that is right for you. With five locations serving seven counties, you don't have to go far to start your own success story. Plus, with tuition lower than four-year colleges, you won't need to spend more for a great education. Visit us online at bscc.edu to learn about your options for seamless academic transfer and high demand career tech and health science offerings. Let us help you tell your story. Bounce around out here, run all, make sure running on and off the field. What's our goal every day? Get a little better. better. Get a little better, okay? Today's no different than any other day. All right, family on three. One, two, three. Family. Kick off return, kick off return on this side. Come on, we want to catch it in the air, hit it in the middle, hit it in return. Let's go again, again. Line back up, let's go. Come on, got to field it in there. Field it, field it, field it. Get there, good. Out of the way to talk. Nice, that's it. All right, jog it off, jog it off, jog it off. All right. You lay good and stretch. All right, kick off, go, kick off team. If he really gets it left like he did, now you got to squeeze more left. You got to tone it down. Get left, left, bug, left, left, more left. Close that gap down. Don't. Overrun the returner.
If you run past the returner, you're just blocking yourself. Break down, find the returner wherever he's at, break down in front of him. Freeze. That's a pretty good job fanning out late. You need to fan out a little bit sooner, okay? Fan out sooner. Jog it back one more time. Let's go. All right, we're back. Jonathan uh, talking about Curry. Wow, this bunch of kids, they have really been resilient this year. They continue to fight. Um, and the senior leadership that they've had, even though, I mean, they haven't won a game, they're probably not going to win a game. But the, the way this senior group has led – is something to admire, yes. and uh, and you were able to go and, and and talk to several seniors on the team. Uh, what did you take from that? You know, really, you you wonder why would you do this? Right. What's the payoff? Right. But these kids love football. It's I mean, it's that simple. They love the game. They love the camaraderie of the team. It's so much more than the scoreboard. They've even mentioned that it's more than the scoreboard. Right. Because you know you're not every. This is an everyday thing. Right. You only see that on Friday nights. But they just love each other and love the game. Well, and you mentioned what's the payoff. <laughs> the payoff is in in their future in life, they're not going to be a person who something bad happens and they give up or something bad happens at their work and they quit. They're going to keep fighting you know, throughout life because they've learned these lessons on the field. And what was what's so cool is to be able to see that they've already learned these lessons. Make no mistake. Curry has struggled to find wins on the football field for the last few years. But if you look beyond the scoreboard, you find a reason for the Yellow Jackets go out there week after week and put in the work. It's not about the wins and losses. And it's not just football. Uh, it's family. It's uh, friendship. Uh, it's like a brotherhood, you know. It's uh, something you can't replace. The scoreboard, the scoreboard doesn't define the game. It's, you know, the players. The scoreboard is just the outcome. It's hard. It's hard to always keep your head high, you know, with this kind of record. Uh, but the attitude around the team is that we know change is coming. It may not start with, uh, you know, it may not be this year, but uh, it's just coming. A tight knit group of six seniors is the backbone of the team. Well, I've known most of them since elementary. They've been friends since then. I mean, it's been tough, but you can't just quit because you lose. Let's stick with it. When it comes to reasons to stick with the sport, it's all about the teammates. I really just being together with all the guys, it's fun. I like, we're just great bonds. I just want to, I guess. Just trying hard. I mean I love the sport. It's just there's so much more than just football and football. It's like friends, family, coaches. You mean not need a lot meet a lot of new people. Make a lot of new friends, family. It's just a good environment to be in. It, I mean, I'd love to win. That's a, that's a plus. But honestly, I, I could care less if I just go out there and have fun. That's all that matters. Uh, I know all the seniors. I've known them pretty much my whole life. Besides Wyatt, since he just he got here ninth grade year. Yes, it has. So, pretty much everyone else I've known since elementary school. So it's been it, we've been we've been close for a long time. I know. I wish I could go back to Little League so I could play it all over again. Dakota Kiker thought about stepping away from football last season, but wouldn't trade his senior season with this group and new head coach DJ Emerson. I'm not a quitter. I don't want to quit. So I decided I'd stick with it, and a bunch of us did, and I'm happy we did because we've had a lot more fun this year than it was last year. Last year, COVID got us, and I also ended up breaking my nose, so I was out a little bit longer than that. So. I'm a lot more happy that we got to play just to experience it because I've only played last year and this year, and I didn't even get two full seasons, but I'm just happy for the ones we have. Curry, whose last win came during the 2008 season, has two games left this year. The Jackets play in Gordo tonight and close the season at Curry's Travis Hudson Stadium the following Thursday against West Point. Hopefully just to go out and have fun, honestly. Like, we haven't won a game since I've been playing, but – just hopefully to have fun because I know everybody gets frustrated out there on the field but as long as you're having fun that's what matters because you're not gonna go back and remember like oh we just beat them this bad or whatever you're just gonna remember the moments you have together as a family and as a team. Senior offensive and defensive lineman Eli McNeil grew up playing football at Curry at five years old. Their family. It's nice to see that they stuck around. 
there's some kids that don't really understand why most of us stay. But I think there's a lot of support. Though he's been out since Curry's third game of the season, he's itching to get back on the field and close out his senior season. I hope I get to play. <laughs> I haven't been able to play for a while. Uh, I hope we can win, actually. It'd be nice. Broly won't forget what he's gained from football. He encourages other Curry students to make the commitment. The relationships you can make, the practices is just fun. Coach, amazing coach. You're, you're all going to love him. They all don't know, they don't know coach like we do. So I would go up to him and be like, you should play. Not just because of, like, if we lose, so what? It's just a great environment to be in. Welcome back in. James Phillips and Jonathan Bentley. Our guest picker this week is a familiar face. from. Uh, he's my co-host for the wrap-up show each week, Brett Elmore. Uh, my co-host. Uh, yes, yes <laughs> your co-host. I'm just happy to be alive at this point, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brett, thanks for joining us, and uh, we're going to get your expertise on uh, this slate of games this week, which uh, we were just talking before we... Uh, it's a great week to pick them. It's a it's a rough week of high school football. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a rough week in the wall win, but we'll see. How about we start with our our one wet Jefferson County team is uh, center point at corner, center point six and three, corner two and six. Jonathan, you know, corner started the year kind of hot, and then they got into the meat of the schedule and not so hot since. Right. So I mean, center point should take. That's a Irwin, right? Used to be Irwin. Yeah, used to be Irwin. Yeah. yeah, they should take care of business in this one. Yeah, I think so. Brett, yeah, c center point. Center point all the way. Yeah. Um, all right, here's one. The records look fairly similar, but I, I think uh, I, I'm calling blowout. Aliceville five and three at Winston County four and four. I think Aliceville's winning this one going away. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Winston County just never can tell. I mean, they still have a shot at the playoffs now. You'd have to have an abacus and some other things to figure it out. <laughs> right. But. Yeah, Aliceville, that is too strong. I think Winston County and Addison would both have to win, mm. uh, and several other things would have to happen, and chaos would ensue, but it's not going to happen. Aliceville will win. I think so, too. Uh, let's see. Sullivan 4-4 four and four at Addison, 5-4. and four. Brad, you go first here. I'm, I'm going to go with Addison because they're at home. Um, I, I, I like the way they played last week. It seems like they play up. When they play these teams that are higher classifications, the Hamiltons, the Haleyvilles, the Good Hopes. Yep, uh, yeah. But uh, I, I like. I think they're going to finish the, the year strong, and I like them at home. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I think they're going to win that one. Uh, quarterback was back, played well. Um, I, I, I was surprised last week that they beat Hamilton. I really was. And so for them to pull that win off, I think they, they win this game against Selgent. Yeah, I, I think so, too. It's weird, the games they lost, so close. Mm -hmm. I mean, Winston County and midfield, and then you beat Hamilton and Haytherville and have a chance probably, where you probably don't even make the playoffs. That's what's crazy. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, they still have a chance, and I think they'll win this game. And don't forget, they had a huge win over Aliceville <laughs> early in the year where we thought, wow, Addison, it looks like a team that's going to compete for a state title almost. Yeah. And then it's just like the wheels fell off with injuries and things like that, but – Man, uh, you know, I hate to see that the season has gone that way, but surely they're going to pick up this win here uh, against Selgin. It's It's the final game for them. Right. You know, they, they don't have a game next week. Next week was their bye week, so uh, this is it. So they're going to go out with a bang. All right. Lynn, 1-7 and seven at Hubbardville, 6-2. and two. We just want to go all in on Hubbardville. Yeah. Okay. They could really help out Meek if they somehow uh, yeah. won that game. Yeah. Uh, Meek, <laughs> really Meek is a huge Lynn fan <laughs> this week. <laughs> right, they are. But, but the problem is – Coach Hastings and his bunch, no. they're just not there yet. Not right, this year. right. Barry, two and six at, who we mentioned, Meek, five and three. You know, I really think this game may be closer than what the records show. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think Meek pulls out the win. Brett? Not even close. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm going Meek because uh, I, it, it's not the Barry of old. I, I think it been at Meek. I like him at home. Meek all the way. Yeah, and they need this. I yeah. think if they win, no matter what, there'll be three. Yeah, right. Well, and Jonathan's the biggest Meek fan we've had all year. Like he jumped on early, yeah. And and all of us have really been, you know, pulling for the Tigers. This has been a great year for them. I call them the pride of Winston County, and it made some people mad. But there's a pride <laughs> right now. They are definitely uh, yeah. uh, this year for sure. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about Jasper four and four at Pinson Valley five and three. And Pinson Valley five and three. That's kind of a deceiving record. Uh, they've lost to some really good teams. And Pennsylvania's not what they've been the last several years, but I still think they're going to they're take the Vikings. 
Brett. They've won, what, two out of the last three state championships? Yeah. Three out of the last four. Three out of the last four, whatever. I mean, you know, <laughs> you can't drop off that much. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think their quarterback has uh, started on two state championship teams for two different schools, Fife and Pinson Valley. Has, right. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Wow, that's two really good programs. Right. You know, yeah. he transferred from Fife to Pinson Valley where he won a state championship at Fife. And then now he, he's the quarterback at Pinson and, and quarterback wow. last year. Um, but uh, too many horses. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Pinson. And you'll be, uh, uh, that, that'll be the game that you guys are broadcasting on yep. Oldies 101.5. Yeah, we'll be on the air on Oldies 101.5, so check it out. All right. Um, Summerton Christian, 7 and 1 at Valley Head, 3 and 5. Jonathan? They got to have it, you know. They, they uh, win, they're second in the region. And Valley Head is usually pretty good. But if you compare kind of the games that they've both played, somebody Christian should win this game pretty easily. Uh, Valley had destroyed them last year, didn't they? Uh, I think it was like 42 to nothing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, was, late in the year. Yeah, this, yeah. this week. And yeah. it was kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. And, and like you say, Summerton needs this. And I'm going with the Road Warriors and Summit and Christian. They'll get it done. Yeah, I think so, too. Summerton, much different team, much more experienced this year than mm -hmm. last year at this yeah. point. And uh, you know, even though Valley Head's three and five, they they usually do have a good program. And like you said, they they blew the doors off the Eagles last year. Yeah, they did. Uh, but revenge too. Yeah, yeah, revenge this, is coming yeah. in. Summerton wants this one. You know, Summerton has the fourth best defense in Class One A football. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah, I mean they they're, they're averaging like that. eight points a game. Yeah, they're holding people. It's unbelievable. Yeah, this and, year. Uh, and now their offense has been rolling. So I mean, I think uh, they're mm -hmm. going to be a tough team. I yeah. really thought it'd be closer last week. Thirty-three to seven was never even close. I yeah. can't wait for next week. Summerton oh, and Meek. Wow. Who yeah. would have said Ooh. that walking into the, the season? <laughs> I can't wait to see Summerton Christian and Meek. Uh, that, that's going to be the game. I, I, I'm like I'm excited because Jasper's moved their game next week to Thursday night. Right. right. Uh, so. That's going to free up my Friday night to see me. Can <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm excited. Um, how about, let's see, Carbon Hill 3-5 and five at Winfield. That's going to be a tough game for Carbon Hill. <laughs> Winfield is, is as good this year as I've ever seen them. Yeah, undefeated. I mean, undefeated. and I mean, it looks like they're heading to 10-0. and 0, And Carbon Hill is just the next team. Right. Know? I mean, if they can keep it semi-close, I'll be impressed. Right. Yeah, they're just uh, – they're not they're not there. A big win last week for them. They needed that, but it's not oh, going to yeah. – you know, it's not going to translate to this week. Winfield's just too good. They're going to they're going to stay undefeated, and at least Carbon Hill's at home. That's true. <laughs> no, it's with, on the road. No, no, it's oh, on the road. Is it, is it on the road? Yeah. Because oh. of the forfeit last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Carbon. I'm going to have to go on the road. There's really oh, nothing man. good to say about it. <laughs> there's there's nothing good. There's nothing more I can say. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Cordova three and five at Fairfield five and three. Um, Cordova has improved. They've got they got a region win. That was yes. that was great for the Blue Devils. Uh, I think Fairfield's just going to have a little too much though, and that's a that's a tough place to go play too. Oh yeah, that'll be very tough. And coming off of, you know, they Parker last week. I mean, Cordova's schedule is just it, you it couldn't is. make it any harder than it is. Yeah, but Fairfield should, you know, win pretty handily. I think. I, I think so too. Uh, were you at the Jasper game or the Walker game at that time at Fairfield when the the lights went out in the stadium? Yes, I was there. You, yeah, I thought yeah. you were there. Yeah, and, yeah, that was. Uh, and, and everybody screamed, "Hit the ground!" You know? <laughs> yeah, it was it was a maddening <laughs> sight. But uh, I think Fairfield once again too many horses, and uh, yeah. and I like them. Right. All right. Um, Tarrant zero and seven at Oakman six and two. Yeah. Uh, Oakman's going to blow Tarrant away. <laughs> I mean, this could be one hundred fifty to nothing if they want it to be. The the best thing that Coach Hall can do is play as starters, maybe a quarter. Because the one thing about this game, and, and for next week as well, is you don't want to get anybody hurt. You're right. going into the region. You're already down a couple of key starters. Yeah. Right. You don't want to get anyone hurt. But, you know, the thing about this game and next week is next week they play Cordova. That's a rivalry game. Right. That game matters. Right. Yes. And, and, no, and you know, Cordova's not going to the playoffs. This is their bowl game. It is, yeah. Next week. And I just, uh, you know, I'm afraid of that injury bug and a situation like this for Oakman. I wouldn't want to be in this situation. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> and, I mean, it really, only bad things could happen. Right. It, it could be a disaster because it, you know, Obviously, they're better than Tarrant, mm -hmm. and, but you don't want to get anyone hurt. But you can, you have a chance to play some 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 players that normally don't get some playing time, rest some folks up. But next week, it's Cordova. If you, you got to win, if Coach Hall would suit up me, you, and Jonathan, 
I guarantee they still win the game. And me and you both have like one leg at this right, point. Right, right. Yeah, 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 we do. So, and, and we would probably still win by at least 10. Yeah. <laughs> I, least. I would score, I would run for 100 yards. Yeah, I, I think I would throw for probably 1,000 <laughs> in just one game. I mean, and you, you would be the all star receiver. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That, just give me an open I think field, right? he could be the defensive, uh, you know, just laying hits on people. Would be just let me right. punt. Well, we probably wouldn't. Punt. Punt. <laughs> you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll be the PAT guy. <laughs> the holder, because yeah. evidently uh, Jasper needs another holder. They went to number three last week on the depth chart. Makes yeah, it tough. That, that's, that makes it tough. Okay, now this is a game I think may be our, our best game of the week. Dora 5-3 and three at Etowah 4-4. Four and four. And there's a lot on the line for, for both teams. So what do you think, Jonathan? Dora will lose by a point somehow. Right. <laughs> they dominate. They'll have way more stats, 500 more yards, and somehow lose by a point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the story of their their season and past, what, two years, I guess. Right, it really has. Cannot they, win a game like this. They, you know? they can't win the big game like this, but I think they get it. I wow. think they get it, yeah, it's because huge. I like the way they're playing defense right now. They're another one of those teams. Uh, in Class 4A, I think they were uh, fourth in 4A in, yeah. in defense. And Coach Williams, of course, he's a defensive guy. He's got to like the way his defense has been playing. Of course, now last week, you yeah. know, that was rough, and that's a heartbreaker. But I think they'll use that as motivation. They need to go to Etowah and win, and I think they will. Well, that's one thing this team has done this year is that they have used – Losses as motivation. Yeah. They bounce back really well. They're a good bounce back team, and uh, so I would love to see that. I went with Etowah though, and I hate to pick against my door Bulldogs, but that's your alma mater. I know, but I <laughs> they hate you. It's man. really close on the limb right now, so I've got. <laughs> you gotta have you're, it. Right? You're, go, you're going for gold. I, I mean, if you're gonna do something, you gotta win. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Uh, which is what Dora needs to do this week. If you're gonna do it, yes. win. It. Yeah. Um, they need it. All right, now game of the week. People may have been surprised when we picked this as our game of the week, but I really feel like um, Curry at Gordo, you know, Curry's 0-8, Gordo's 6-2. and Gordo's a team that <laughs> always competes for a, a state championship. But Curry needs – we needed to highlight Curry because yeah. being 0-8 and, and these kids have fought and they have not given up, and, and that's one thing that we heard um, – hearing from the, the students and hearing from Coach Emerson, this team hasn't given up. And they, they really need, uh, they need a pat on the back for, for being in there and fighting. And, and that, that was why we wanted to do the game of the week um, with Curry this week. So um, I, know, I know who we're going to pick. <laughs> now, Jonathan, me and Jonathan are just going to go ahead and say, Gordo, this is your alma mater. Yeah. So we're going to let you <laughs> yeah. pick it. Yeah. Uh, we always let our guest picker go last. So we're going to let you pick it. I think I've been thrown under the bus. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with with Gordo. And uh, but most I, of I our still, guest pickers have gone with their home team. <laughs> this is different. They, right? Yeah, this is a <laughs> little bit different. Even though I'm the pride of Curry. Yeah, right. Uh, I no, thought you may be one of the more infamous graduates. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. A lot of people think I graduated from Walker, and I did. I graduated from Curry, and I and I love the school and I love the program. But yeah. Uh, I no no match for Gordo, but you're right, and I'm glad you guys picked this as the game of the week because it, those kids still went out there in the heat of the summer. They practiced, they've played the games, they've done everything they were asked to do, and it takes a lot in this day and time when there's so many other things that you can do, like sit at home and play video games. Right, you know that they're out there and they're competing, and you you feel for them, but they're laying the foundation. Uh, for coach there, and 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 especially the seniors and stuff, they're laying the foundation for Coach Emerson's uh, program, and uh, that'll be something they can be proud of. Right, I think you're exactly right. I think uh, several years from now, we're going to look back and we're going to go, it was that group right. that started this. Yeah, yeah. They, they laid the foundation for, for the program. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, uh, anything else we need to talk about? And only one week left, you believe this? Yeah, I know. It's almost it's over. Season's flown by for sure. Yeah, yeah really. The nice. starts and ends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, a, at a blink of an eye. <laughs> have, we, have we got our cigars ready for this weekend? Uh, it's been a long time since Tennessee's. T uh, Tennessee doesn't know what a cigar tastes like <laughs> right. at this point. You know, uh, that, if that, Tennessee wins, I'll smoke a cigar. Yeah. There you uh, go. I like that. Uh, I mean, that's how confident I am in Alabama. If, yeah. If Tennessee wins, I. 
I hate to say it, but I might well get a Tennessee tattoo or something. <laughs> I'm pretty confident Alabama's going to pull this one out. You know, it's funny. We had a coach, high school coach here saying you got to beat somebody to make it a rivalry. Right. And yeah. it's been 14 years? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Grief. I'll get a T shaved in the back of my head if they win. I, I'd go that far. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, I'm not going to do anything. They got a chance yeah, well, this year, more than usual. Pro- yeah, say. probably so. They have a better chance uh, uh, this year than they had in quite some time. Come on, Brad. Come on. But it's not going to happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm just saying there's a chance, just a slim chance. Do you remember just... that Alabama has lost a game now? They're not yeah. losing to Tennessee. No, they're not going to lose to Tennessee. We're, we're focused at this no. point. The guys are focused. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, what? Uh, let's talk about who we're listening to this week. going to be Jasper. Yep, Jasper and Pinson Valley. We'll have them on the radio. Of course, our airtime starts at 6 o'clock at WJLX 101.5. You can pick us up uh, online on the app. Uh, you download the free app for your phone, WGLX1015.com. And uh, we'll have the game and scoreboard afterwards and look forward to it. That's right. Everybody throughout the night, be sure to go to DMEPrepZone.com. Uh, that's, uh, we, we sponsor the scoreboard mm-hmm. um, on the radio station, so be sure to go there throughout the night to see uh, live scoring updates. Um, Jonathan, anything else? They definitely need to pick up the paper every Saturday. Great coverage. I had... Um, I had several people uh, while I was in the hospital <laughs> mention how much they like the football coverage. Like, um, just, I wish we had better teams. That's all, right, right? Yeah, I mean, but you know, hey, we we're we love our teams, them. though, right? That's right. We love yeah. our student athletes and coaches and everybody. We like to be able to highlight and even um, on Prep Zone Facebook videos where we show bands and cheerleaders and things like that. We want everybody to get their sure. their moment of glory. So, uh, well. Guys, for y'all, um, I will just go ahead and say good day and, and look for us at the football fields this Friday. <laughs>